Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing research methods and psychology here at Learning the Social Sciences. Psychologists use different techniques to conduct research and collect data to draw conclusions in order to learn more about the mind and behavior. Well-designed research helps psychologists to make logical and supported conclusions instead of just relying on common sense and assumptions. There are different ways that psychologists approach data collection. Now, the most popular and most known, of course, are just having psychologists conduct an experiment. But there's a long list of other forms of studies and ways that they can research to be able to draw conclusions. For example, they could do a correlational study, a case study, longitudinal study, or cross-sectional cross study. You also have survey research where they can send out surveys and gain a lot of information. You can also have a scientific approach to a naturalistic observation. When thinking about psychology, people tend to focus on experiments where a researcher manipulates and controls certain variables to see the effect on other variables. Simply put, researchers can see through data a cause and effect relationship with their studies. While conducting the experiment, the researcher follows the scientific method and can perform their experiment in a lab or out in the field. They could also have a quasi-experiment that is both in the lab and out in the field. A case study is when a researcher focuses on one person, a group, or a specific situation. Freud was known for using case studies to form his theories. Some of the most famous and widely known studies were Phineas Gage and Jeannie. Phineas Gage suffered a catastrophic injury when a tapping iron from his work on the railroad shot through his frontal lobe, causing permanent brain damage, but somehow he survived. His doctor recorded his change in behavior and demeanor and associated that with the location in his brain. And so with that, we can now know that personality and the frontal lobe are related. Of course, a lot of other work has gone into it to really confirm that. But in terms of the 1800s in a case study, it really provided a lot of evidence for what is going on. Jeannie was a girl who experienced severe child abuse and neglect. And she was raised in isolation, attached to a potty chair, and only fed baby food until her mother helped her escape when she was 13 years old. She could not talk. She had difficulty walking. And so a team was assembled to help Jeannie to learn how to talk, to properly walk, and how to socialize. Through research with Jeannie, a lot has been known about linguistics and just the stages of development and if certain stages have to be accomplished by a certain time period. Researchers can collect and examine uh, data with correlational studies to see if there is a relationship between two or more items. Sometimes correlational studies are conducted because performing an experiment is not possible or ethical. For example, a psychologist can look at drinking alcohol and bouts of anger, but you would never go and have somebody in a lab setting repeatedly drink alcohol to see and then maybe encourage some bouts of anger to appear. Correlational studies cannot prove cause and effect relationships. If a researcher does a study on the relationship between self-esteem and career promotions, one cannot know for absolute certainty if their career advancement is the sole cause for their self-esteem or if there are other contributing factors. However, it can give insight into the questions that the psychologists are asking. One of the most common methods for researchers to gather data is through a survey in the survey method. A psychologist creates a survey, a test, or a questionnaire on a specific topic or variable of interest and then gives it to a random sample of participants. It is an effective and fast way to gather information, but the data relies on the questions being written well and the participants to accurately represent the sample sought. However, if one needs information about a large group of people, a survey is really the best method to collect a lot of data. 
Longitudinal studies are a type of correlational research. The research for these studies can occur over a period of weeks, months, or years. Some last several decades. One example of a longitudinal study is if a researcher wants to see if diet can slow down the oncoming, oncoming symptoms of dementia. They may start to track people's diets in their 30s and then follow up with them throughout the rest of the course of their life to see if there are dietary changes and to see if and when they start to exhibit symptoms of dementia. This type of research can give valuable information when studying development and lifespan issues. However, the research can be expensive and other variables may impact the data. Also, some participants might drop out over the course of the study. A cross-sectional study compares participants of different ages at one time. If a researcher wants to see about intelligence scores from different age groups and to see if scores change over the course of one's lifespan, then this type of study would provide sufficient data. Cross-sectional studies are good at providing information about the current population and can show characteristics of a given population. One does not manipulate variables in this type of study, and one cannot determine a cause and effect relationship. Naturalistic observations do happen in the field of psychology. Social scientists and psychologists utilize naturalistic observations when lab research would not be possible due to costs or because of how it would affect the participants' behavior. Researchers observe subjects in their real-life environment and see how they respond to certain situations. For example, when looking at the student-teacher relationship, a researcher would opt to spend time in a classroom than trying to recreate a classroom in a lab setting. It just makes more sense to go where people are really just acting as normal. So these have been different types of research methods in psychology. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them down below. And always remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.